Welcome, everyone, to episode 86 of the Looks Like a Movie podcast. My name is Kevin. I'm here with Owen. And today we're talking about Joker Fully Ado. Our schedule has changed a little bit so we can give a, a bit of a, a rundown and overview. Douglas, our co-host, is is sick currently. Um, and so I know everybody's anticipating the Megalopolis episode. We're going to push that back a week. And since Owen and I saw Joker Fully Ado, we can talk about that this week. Next week, when Doug is back, we can talk about Megalopolis and our whole New York Film Festival experience that we that we had together. And then the following week, we can do a little bit of an October roundup catch up for all the releases that are kind of happening over this past week and and next week and, and all the stuff that is not Megalopolis and Joker will just kind of squeeze into an episode. And then we'll end the month with our little Halloween special. But that's the sort of breakdown of of the coming weeks uh so no megalopolis this week if you were really looking forward to that you got to wait an extra week uh stuff happens you know we don't we don't plan these things um but we're going to talk about joker and before we talk about joker we're going to talk about what we've watched over the past two weeks i guess because we took a little bit of a a a week off uh for the film festival Uh, but along with missing megalopolis (laughs) We are also not going to tell you guys yet about our New York Film Festival screenings because we want Doug to be here for that as well. So we've got two weeks of logs here, but we'll save the film festival stuff for next week. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Um, The week before the festival, I really didn't watch anything because I was just trying to like get everything situated before I watched movies uh, every hour for, you know, the next x amount of days um but i did watch a film on the train actually and, and this is not a part of new york film festival but it was on the train to new york um it was it's, it's called all the vermeers in new york and i actually do recommend this that you watch this one kevin um it's is a john jost film um from 1990 and it's very interesting um we actually ended up going to the met and seeing uh, a Vermeer there so everything's kind of tying in uh, but I really really adored this film uh, it's I, I don't really know how I would describe it I wouldn't really put it in a box uh, per se um, um, but it kind of does have um, little like sitcom moments but there's very interesting like formal elements that are tied to it um, it's it's a funny kind of little New York movie um, and I really really enjoyed it but it, it's it's not the easiest to talk about um because it's like it's incredibly long description very long description and she's kind of explaining like all the like little things they do um yeah. but it's it's an interesting film that i recommend people check it out it's not you know it has five thousand logs in letterbox it's not like a you know right. film, film but i do do really enjoy that one um and then you know a lot of new york stuff um i what's the next the next thing i can kind of talk about is um it's not a part of the festival but uh, me and Doug had some time to kill, so we we went to the the Metrograph in New York, and we saw Mysterious Objects at Noon, which is uh, Weir Sethical's feature length debut. Um, oh. It's a it's a really good film. I that was uh, Doug hadn't seen a a Weir Sethical film, and I've only seen a few of his films, um, but I I do really enjoy his work, and and then this one was a cute one. It's not my favorite of his, but I mean it's it's still a really really solid, well made film. Um, and then, you know, a bunch of New York stuff. Um, me and Kevin, we watched Halloween four. <laughs> which, we'll do that. We'll, we'll talk yeah. more about Halloween movies later. But we did, we did watch Halloween four. Yeah. Um, that was and uh, and then me and Devin, we watched um, we watched Johnny Toe's Mad Detective, uh, yesterday. Um, right. But outside of that, it was it was mainly the kind of the New York film festival. We watched some, you know, short films and stuff like that at the, right. um, the film co-op. Um, and I went to the, one of the Beavers uh, retrospective screenings, but outside of that, it was a lot of the, the, the New York film festival stuff that we'll talk about next week. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. I got similarly, mostly New York stuff that I'll avoid for now, but there's definitely some things in here. I, uh, I don't think I talked about this last episode. I'm pretty sure this is a past the last episode recording i watched uh a tale of autumn which is romare's yeah uh, maybe for me, i feel like you did mention his, this 
Maybe I did. I don't know. It's. Did. I feel like we recorded on the 22nd and it says I logged it on the 23rd, but perhaps yeah, maybe we talked about it before, but it can, you can just continue. We'll talk about it. Just, again. You know, I'll just talk about it a second time if I did, um, because did I talk about Snack Shack last time? Yeah. OK, because it says I logged those both on the same day. <laughs> you you definitely did talk about Snack Shack. I feel like these are the two movies he talked about last time. You know, <laughs> the calendar is all off. It's, it's OK. It, we could, it, we, we could you know, we, we, it's we been a while. It, it's, we're a little, it has we're been a while. Little. It's not important. The point is, it, it was the beginning of autumn and now we're kind of like in the autumn season. You know, I'll check that guy's list. I'll recommend that. Uh, the guy's list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little little pod inside. Do we t- do we tell people about this? Yeah. Do we do we expose this person? That's not right. There's a there's, there's a li- there's a list on Letterbox, um, with every movie. No, there. I think. Oh wait, no, listen, that's a, that's the wrong list. I that's the wrong list. This is the uh, uh, the 25 year. Right. Right. Did. Yeah. Um, so there's a list on Letterbox <laughs> from one of our listeners, uh, a, a devoted a, listener. There's a thousand eighty films so far. Yeah. Who puts every movie that we mention on the podcast into a list? Um. Yeah. I don't know if it go. I don't know if it dates matter. back to the first episode. Um, it, it might just be when they started listening to it, but um, but that's a list that exists. Okay, those movies aren't uh, on here. Um, okay, so maybe I didn't talk about that unless they're they've been slacking. But I feel like right. I did talk. So when about does it say the list was updated? I don't. I don't know if that's it. it. You you did mention his three daughters at the last movie on the list. Okay. Yes. So then that's the cutoff. So I did okay. not talk about. All okay. Okay. Tales. Okay. Maybe uh, we just talked about this off podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's another listen, thing is guys, like... it's we're a bit messy. It's been a long, <laughs> it's been a long two weeks, and, and it's just today. It was a very together. long morning. Owen and I, for context, had to wake up at five in the morning today after going to sleep at two in the morning. <laughs> not our brains are not uh, like uh, fully functioning right yeah. now. Uh, but yeah, Tale of Autumn is the last of the four seasons that I had to watch. I've seen the other three, um, and now I've completed the collection. Uh, if you are in the mood for an autumn watch, if the leaves are changing and you want to, you know, match the vibe, uh, I, there's never a Romare movie that I wouldn't recommend on the pod, but this one's really Maybe, neat, honestly. Would, would I be able to watch that one without watching the other ones? Yeah, yeah. The okay. None of the four seasons really... Uh, because i am i'm like whenever I, I was interested when you said that because um like uh, the thing i'm working on right now is very like autumn focused and i was just yeah you know, just a, you know why not throw that one on yeah i think you'd like it. i mean i always recommend it to you starting with summer because i just mm-hmm. think that that's the one that you'd like yeah. the most but i i've been that was kind of my thought process was like i I, when I was watching a lot of these Romares, like I had seen summer and I had seen winter and then I waited until spring to watch spring and I could have yeah. just like finished the collection this summer, well, but then yeah, I knew yeah, yeah, fall yeah. was coming and I was like, I'll just wait a little bit. And then it was the first day of fall and I was like, okay, this is perfect. Let me, let me watch mm-hmm. it now. Um, Cause it's just nice to like match the, match the season. Yeah, No, the leaves um, are changing. It was really, yeah, uh, no, I mean, it's, I woke up this morning. I didn't really, really realize beautiful it. Outside. Um, but yeah, I woke up this morning and I looked out my window. Owen has now seen my bedroom. There's no, uh, there's no <laughs> blinds in my bedroom. They're just, yeah. it's just the window. And so I wake up this morning and I look out my window and the leaves are just like, I'm, I don't, maybe I just didn't realize it before, but it just looks like full blown fall now. And mm-hmm. I'm like, this is really nice. Uh, it just yeah. got me in the mood. Uh, and then kind of like, uh, I, I, again, snack shack, which I mentioned, like, a uh, perfectly watchable like fun time that kind of like gets ruined by the ending i think a little bit um some people m- might think the movie gets enhanced by the ending but i was just trying to like catch Maybe up the, on the guy's slacking on the list because yeah i, I, like I was I, about it. I was there i was like i hate that guy's i was talking about the what's the guy's name right <laughs> No, maybe we, yeah, maybe we did talk about it anyway i, I have other face. movies that, <laughs> i have other movies that we didn't talk about including uh hale county this morning this evening which is a Ramel Ross documentary, the director oh, yeah. of Nickel Boys, which we did see at the festival, which again, we will talk about next week, but I wanted to watch that to preempt Nickel Boys. Um, and if you're going into watching Nickel Boys and uh, you're not sure if you're going to like it because it's, it's ha- you know, the, the reaction to Nickel, it's, it's a very unique film. It's, it might not connect with everybody. I would really recommend checking out the documentary. I think... I think it would be a good uh, thing to 
to do to prepare. It's like 70 minutes long and it's a wonderful documentary. And I think it just kind of gets you in the right headspace for what you're going to experience yeah. when you watch Nickel Boys, which is such a like groundbreaking film. Um, it's so mm-hmm. cool. Uh, so I think the documentary is a, is a big recommendation. I watched Megan Parks, My Old Ass, which has a terrible title. However, <laughs> you're not a fan of not a terrible film. Um, I was a fan of Megan Park previously because I thought that the fallout was like a really neat debut. Mm-hmm. Um, just from like the perspective of a writer, I don't know. I said this in my review. I don't know that she is a director who I'm like super drawn to. I don't know that she's yeah. like the most talented director in the world, but as a writer, uh, especially like you know, people talk a lot about how high school movies and stuff like that don't feel like high school movies because it's like these are adults writing about high schoolers. And yeah, just yeah, out yeah. Of touch. But she really knows how to like do that stuff authentically. Like between these two movies, she has two teen characters that just actually feel like authentic teenagers. Granted, I'm not a teenager anymore. So uh, yeah. like, who's to say? but but at least it feels that way. Like it, it feels right. And like she knows what she's doing. And, and it's just really impressive because the writing is good. And and it's it's like super simple like it's like not a movie that's like really saying anything new and it still manages to like be emotional and just be like a nice little watch and it's funny and if you just want like if you're like a coming of age person it's a good time um i will skip over megalopolis of course uh and then we kind of hit this stride of new york film festival screenings in between i did see some new releases uh including saturday night oh yeah Uh, yeah which we, which we really cover on the yeah podcast. we kind of agreed that we weren't <laughs> gonna do it on the pod and it technically does come out wide like this or this past weekend it just came out wide so hypothetically it would be on our october wrap-up episode however i don't think either owen or doug want to watch that movie and i don't think that i would recommend it much either unless you're like an snl super fan and and then you kind of yeah treat like snl veterans like like the mcu then (laughs) it's probably not the movie for you it's truthfully the problem is the it doesn't really work as a comedy for me i i i feel like most of what is funny about it is just stuff that we already knew to be funny in real life like the best jokes in the movie are just either us laughing at jokes that the real person told so many years ago or laughing yeah. at that person's persona, which we now know so well. And I thought like the cool thing about making a movie like this was that it would give us like original, like silly, like behind the scenes jokes yeah, and the yeah, stuff yeah. that's happening behind the scenes of the production is just like not the funniest. And, and I don't think that the dramatic tension works really well either. I get that it's like a hard challenge to overcome the fact that like you're making a movie about SNL, which any single person in America knows to be like one of the most successful programs ever. So so there's not really any tension there to begin with. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I saw a lot of other it's people. It's like, oh like, no, maybe they're going to fail. Yeah. And <laughs> maybe it's like, Lord, no, like, not. It would be crazy um, if it was like a like a glorious bastards thing and like right, when they just it. fucking fails. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be a much cooler movie to be fair because it's like the problem is not so much that you you know like it's like there's movies that could have tension even if you know how they're gonna end right like it's like that's not impossible but it just it just never feels like it has that because the characters are so like it's 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 almost crazy that they're like so paper thin considering they're like all super iconic real people that we like love yeah but it's mostly just like these young actors doing impressions of those iconic people it Mm -hmm. never feels like they're like like, an snl bit on yeah like it never really feels like they're like getting below the surface and like turning them into a character it's just them like doing their best impression Mm -hmm. and that's kind of boring to me i guess other people could really get behind that for me Corey michael smith is like i talked to owen about this but like the the obvious standout is chevy chase like no he's almost the only person that feels like he's kind of in the right movie um but other than that it's not the greatest uh i did watch halloween 4 which i would mention we watched together um Mm -hmm. again we're gonna talk about halloween uh at the end of the month so i won't say too much but i will say i was very pleasantly surprised by this one i've been enjoying all at this point through the first four movies i've been enjoying all the sequels uh Mm -hmm. but I I did not go into Halloween four expecting to like it as much as I did. That's what I will say. I I really had a great time. I thought it was super cool. Um, and then that pretty much brings us to Joker Folia Do because everything else is uh, film festival screenings for me. 
So we could get into our Joker talk. Uh, we'll set the scene. Owen and I saw this with some <laughs> some other friends of the pod yeah. uh, at the Lincoln Square IMAX uh, mm-hmm. in 70 millimeter, which was my first, millimeter. My first ever first... 70 millimeter screening was Joker fully. Oh, wow. Um, not a great experience, uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, I don't So this was, um, did we watch this after another movie that day or was this the only movie we saw that day? I um, think... me and Devin saw the, um, the Godard, uh, the Godard's right. last film. I, I saw oh, well, Godard's this is when I came, film. yes, yes, yes. I was and in after and that, I came into the city for after this seeing Godard's last you. film, I, yeah. I saw Joker too. Right. So I... <laughs> I didn't do much before this Joker screening. This was the only movie of that day for me. Um, and and so I thought that I could keep an open mind because I didn't have <laughs> anything to compare it to, you know, yeah. like some of the some of the problems of these film festival movies that we were seeing and especially like something like Saturday Night, which was like, you know, that was like a new release that I saw in theaters but it was prior to two festival movies. So it's like, you're always going to like, kind of like compare when you're watching that many things in a row in a day, like Joker two had a bit of a, a fresh slate. Um, and yeah. it sucked. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was really bad. Um, I don't even really know where to begin with this one. Do you want to start because... with the first movie a little, like just like a little bit, a little bit about it. Sure. Yeah. How, when's the last time you've seen Joker? So <laughs> I'm, at this point, at this moment in time, I'm quite scared to rewatch it because I yeah. think I think I'll probably just straight up hate it. Mm-hmm. But when it first came out, I was a huge Joker fan. I saw it twice in theaters. Yeah. It was one of my favorite movies of that year. And and then my thoughts on it kind of like got worse and worse, even without rewatching it. Yeah. And then uh, I it's probably been a bit now, but I, I want to say either like a, a year ago or maybe two years ago now, but like sometime between the one year ago and two year ago window, I rewatched it with a friend who had never seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just watching it and I was like, this is so much worse than what I remember. <laughs> yeah. Like I still like kind of liked things about it. I was like, it's not mm-hmm. like an awful movie, but yeah. Um, but that was my most recent rewatch, and I was like, "Damn, this is this is a, a clear step down from from what it was okay. when I saw it in theaters." Yeah, this is I mean, this can like age me <laughs> like really crazy, but Joker twenty nineteen was the first rated R movie I saw in theaters. <laughs> Bro. I I was in college when Joker <laughs> came out. What do you uh, mean? <laughs> um, so I saw that. You never um, snuck into like a movie? No. I wasn't Were you, even like, like scared to get caught. N- I mean, I just didn't like I was watching like what came out in 2019 like Infinity War. <laughs> Endgame, Endgame came out in 2018. I was like that was like that was what I, I was like watching like you were fucking... watching like baby movies. Yeah, I was watching like it's just like slop. I don't know. It was 2016. There was but... never like a time when you were younger where like your friend, like a group of friends were um, like, oh, there's like this scary like horror movie out. Like let's let's buy a ticket for a different movie and sneak into this no. one. That never happened. I mean, I I probably have seen I probably had seen an R-rated movie before that, just not in just the theater. theaters. Okay, but I don't I don't like I actually can't like point out an R-rated movie that I saw before that. I'm sure you have. I'm though. sure I, I saw know. one. I just don't yeah. think I can't think of it. But I remember specifically, like, I saw Joker with my dad, and it was I, I had never seen an R-rated movie before that. But it really wasn't like I mean, I would see like, you know, like popular things, but I wasn't really like watching them. I was probably like watching like television, like right. I was watching like CW shows. <laughs> What happened to you, man? <laughs> you were like, but, you were on like a clear trajectory to just like being like the ultimate normie, like like posting <laughs> on Twitter about how you know the the Flash is actually good or something. <laughs> but I mean, so I was sixteen, so I was in what grade are you in when six? You're sixteen. Um, I guess like between like sophomore, sophomore and junior, or... like end of sophomore year or beginning of junior year, depending. Yeah, I think I was a sophomore. Um, yeah. Is, so yeah, I mean, I saw that when it came out, and but like, 
I hadn't seen any movies, so like it was like, oh, this movie's cool because I hadn't seen any movies. Um, yeah. But I don't think I've seen it since. I probably like had seen it like maybe like when it came out, um, like able to rent. I probably watched it again, but I probably haven't seen it since like 2019, mm-hmm. 2020 maybe. Um, and I probably seen like 2000 movies since then. Um, so my feelings on it have definitely changed, but I haven't, I have not rewatched it yet. Um, I don't really have <laughs> any plans to see it anytime soon. Right. <laughs> But it makes sense as a, like looking back on it and it being like a billion dollar movie and like a, like a reasonably like liked movie among like, mm-hmm. you know, the average movie viewer. It makes sense that it, cause it kind of is like, especially like the first one is just like kind of pulling from a lot of other things. And like, if you haven't seen those things, like, oh, this is really interesting. Cause I have no uh, kind of frame of reference uh, for something like that. Um, so yeah. it kind of does work as like first R-rated movie in theater. It's like, wow, I didn't know you could do this shit. Yeah, uh, but after no, that makes sense. after seeing other movies, it it's interesting to look back on it. Yeah, and, um, and I think yeah, I think that's good kind of setup almost mm-hmm. for what happens in this sequel because yeah. it kind of in many ways takes that fan experience and people's relationship to the first one and <laughs> yeah. like reverses it and, and mm-hmm. shoves it back in their faces uh, and is like a little bit of a fuck you movie from Todd Phillips, yeah. uh, which is a concept that I wanted to talk to you about because mm-hmm. I think there are like kind of two conversations happening uh, around this movie in response yeah. to this movie, which are either like, people saying that it is just straight up bad which is like the common opinion from most people currently i mean the movie is being like absolutely destroyed by both critics and like general audiences it it is the um only people aren't even going people are showing up yeah it's people aren't showing up it's flopping at the box office and not just that but i believe it has the worst cinema score for any movie this year. Um, and when you think about yeah. some of the bad movies that came out this year, that is an impressive mark. Um, yeah, it's like, it's not even like that people are saying it's bad. Like people like hate this movie. Yeah. And it's like for reference, for those of you who don't know, cinema score is not like a critic score. It's like these are people, like regular yeah. people being surveyed after they leave the movie theater, like, like regular ass, like viewers watching this movie and and they hated this more than any movie that's come out this year um it has like a 33 percent from critics on rotten tomatoes and a similar audience score i think it's like a 32 percent audience score um so just like absolutely hated by the masses mostly and so that brings me back to what i was saying there, there's there's the two responses it is either that where people are just like straight up this is an awful movie or there are kind of people trying to already claim it as like being smarter uh and and like could be a movie yeah. that in the future develops this cult following because it is Todd Phillips kind of making fun of the fans of the first movie and being fed up with the response to the first movie and how people might have misinterpreted the first movie and found themselves you know like too connected to this Joker character who is not somebody that uh Todd Phillips wanted you to empathize with I guess um yeah. and and so he kind of wanted to make a movie that is like fuck all of you guys um and and that is ultimately like successful here i guess but my yeah. problem is that i don't think it makes it a good movie and <laughs> no, that's that's, kind the, of where that's the, the big issue is. is i think it is an interesting sort of idea of like because it it it's like kind of the thing where the first joker movie ends when he's like he's on like the car and like he has his whole mob um right. like kind of like chanting his name and like like I love the Joker thing, and then like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, and Joker has always kind of been like that kind of like with Heath Ledger and stuff like that. It's, he's always kind of been like that like uh, dude on a, like a T-shirt kind of character where it's like, right. and he's like with like Tony Soprano, and he's like with all those kind of like big name like kind of guys. Um, he's kind of been like a kind of cultural thing, um, but with the specific Joker movie, um, he's kind of treated in a in a specific way where like he's the main character, and it becomes a 
a little bit different than like when he's fighting Batman. Yeah. Um, but that's kind now of in the even, second one, the mob disappears. Yeah. But that's kind of even like when you're talking about like people saying it's a bad movie, there's even like a split there where it's like people are just like, oh, it's just, it's just a bad movie. And there's also people who are like, who are like, oh, like, y- why are you fucking putting musicals in my Joker movie? Or like, right. like it's a bad movie because of like, like Joker, not Joker. It's a bad movie because of like certain things that it's like, those aren't really the issues. It's more a lot, like all kind of all of it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of problems with the movie, but it's not like yeah. because of some things that are being pointed exactly. out. Exactly. And I think there's like, there's stuff that we could talk. I think we could actually mostly avoid spoiling this movie until the end of the episode. I want to talk about the ending specifically, but like, I feel like we could talk about everything else before we get to the ending and yeah. just kind of like explain why we didn't like it a little bit because, because it is. Yeah. I mean, there, there is that crowd of people who is like, why did you ruin this by making well, it? It's like, it's a super and, like, it the kind of general audience is like a super like i don't know how to say like it's like super like red pill andrew tate like vibes yeah for like and like immediately when you knew that they were gonna make this like a musical uh, you knew that people were gonna be upset i i saw some comment i don't i I don't know what word for it It was like some shitty twitter comment but it was like joker fans are straight guys and straight guys don't like musicals of course it was gonna be bad or something yeah. <laughs> or of course people are gonna hate it but it's it was like, like some, some ridiculous like fucking twitter comment the average person really doesn't like me no movie the average musicals person anymore. No, that, like people uh, hate movie musicals and it's kind of an interesting conversation in terms yeah. of not even only this movie but just kind of the culture right now of like not only they're hiding the fact that a lot of movies are musicals but the fact that people just like are like walking out of Joker too because of just the musical numbers. Like, it's not even like some people probably are walking out because it's bad. But there was this thing like with every musical number, people more and more people would walk out. Yeah, but it's, it's like, like it's I, I don't know. It's, it, that's been a silly conversation for me for a while because it's like, uh, you know, uh, not that it's a, not silly this way particularly because I'm not telling somebody, um, what kind of movie to make, right? Like, it's like I don't want to do that. But it yeah. is it is funny that there's this kind of like consensus from the studios being like we have to market this as not a musical, but we're but we're promoting a musical. It's like you're yeah. like that's what it's like the movie you have is a musical, and then you have to market it as not a musical. And it's like maybe yeah. the movie you have shouldn't be a musical. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you it's know, interesting. It's like, um, I think like an interesting. Um companion film not in in like a viewing sense but in like a conversation sense is is wonka which was a recent film that was marketed like it was trying to hide the musical thing um and wonka was very successful um and that is like it's an interesting thing of like what went wrong here i think a lot of it has to do with the audience um and like who yeah was expecting to watch this movie because i think with wonka it's like you probably could have marketed that as a musical and maybe it would have done a little less, but I think when you go to see Wonka and it is a musical, you, it's easier to kind of get in that rhythm than like going to see the sequel to like this, like gritty jokers movie. Yeah. Um, then he starts singing. I mean, um, even mean girls is a similar example yeah. and they like reviving mean girls as a musical and, and then not like, putting out a trailer where there is just a song playing over the trailer mm-hmm. rather than like showing any of the musical numbers it and and it's yeah. called mean girls the musical i believe <laughs> i could be wrong yeah. but i'm pretty sure it's uh, literally called that and then they don't like actually show the the uh music numbers in the trailer and so like it's a really interesting approach because it's like like something like that really the only thing that you're i guess you're modernizing it like that's part of calling for the sequel but really the only thing that's different is Mm -hmm. that you took this thing and you remade it as a musical but then you don't want to tell people that you remade it it's it's like very interesting that like you would even i don't you know it's it's that that's it's a that's that's kind of my point is is it's like strange from their perspective that like it's even an idea that they're entertaining when they're gonna just shy away from yeah from using the idea anyway because they know people don't like it um yeah because it's like we're not talking about you know that's that's what i was saying before it's like i don't want to tell a director what to do but this no, isn't exactly like musical, this isn't exactly I'm like an original like an original thing you know what i mean like mean girls the musical is not like some 
uh, like highly conceived like yeah, project yeah. from from some some like one of our great masters it's like it's mean girls the musical you know it's like yeah. they they that's like a that starts at like the studio level it's like we're going to make a sequel to mean girls because mean girls is this super like yeah. iconic movie that has had a 20 year shelf life now um so it's like that kind of thing where it's like, why are you even making these? Same with Wonka, even though Wonka ended up being good. It's like, yeah, you're making Wonka because of the existing IP. Yeah. So it's like, why you're is your approach movie, to it a musical? You you're know? making like a movie like, in order to make money in yeah. like the studio system. And then you're doing something that is that, you know, is like anti money. To... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's fun. I mean, listen, I'm not complaining from that perspective, because for me, like the money doesn't mean anything. Like, it's like, that's not why I'm going to see yeah, a movie, no. you know, but it's like, it is just an interesting conversation because I wonder what's happening at that studio level and like why this is even an idea that they keep entertaining uh, yeah. failure after failure. I mean, Mean Girls and uh, Wonka were both like, or not not Wonka, uh, but Mean Girls was like a flop pretty much. Like it made much well, less that's, than they expected to. That's the worry um, is like, especially with Joker 2, um, is like the musical, it is on like, it's like, it's, it's barely hanging on. And with big yeah. flops like this, it's like I don't know if we're gonna get a big budget musical anytime soon, you yeah. know, um, which is is kind of sucky. And and the thing with Joker too, also, is that it's kind of an anti musical on purpose. I mean, yeah, specifically Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, mm -hmm. his musical numbers are not good, and a lot of yeah. people are going to say that it's just bad. I I listen, I don't like this decision, but it but it does feel like that was probably done on purpose. It does feel like part of the like, fuck you attitude of the movie and what mm -hmm. Todd Phillips was going for. And the Joker character himself is for the musical numbers to not be like super catchy songs that are going to mm -hmm. live on in the culture, as opposed to like the kind of <laughs> shitty songs that they yeah. are for me though. Like, it's like, yeah, sure. A cool swing. I don't like, it's like, that's kind of how I feel about most of this movie is like, sure. I guess it's a, it's a cool yeah. idea in theory. The problem is that like none of that makes it a good watch for me. It's yeah, you know. Well, it's like, like it's like, like I don't know. It's like a big f fuck you movie. Like it's a big like oh hey look we made a bad movie. Yeah, we spent two hundred million dollars like, on a bad movie here. You, like yeah. I don't know. It doesn't all like I think. <laughs> I don't think Todd Phillips is a strong enough filmmaker to have pulled off some of the kind of things he was trying to do um yeah. and then it ultimately kind of is is just a weird thing that exists um i think it is yeah. interesting in terms of like a culture thing of like that this is a movie that exists ultimately i just think it is a, a poor film um that is like not very interesting actually like viewing it it's, it's more interesting to talk kind of talk, talk about it as like a thing that exists but in terms right. of what it actually is i don't think it is very interesting no and i you know it's uh, that's that to me is the more interesting conversation that should be being had because i see even like a, a pretty regularly now like it seems like people are posting stuff about how, like all of these kind of like bold things that phillips is doing uh, yeah. and like propping the movie up now as a result and i'm just like i think the count that should really be the conversation is like does any of this stuff actually matter if if it's not good and it's like it, it yeah. feels almost like a lot of these people and maybe they just think it's a good movie as a result of that no but like, i'm i'm me, there are definitely I, you know, people who do like, just enjoy the movie i um, it's just it's just hard to see like that defense of the movie like i don't i i'm sure there are other movies in the past that i have approached that way where almost like the significance of what they're trying to achieve influences how much i enjoy it but yeah and i, I almost think... like i almost like respect it more than i enjoy it you know but i, think I don't know that i feel with... that way about either of the either. film is it's hard for me to like even respect it a lot because of the todd phillips is like a very annoying filmmaker in like a way right. where <laughs> um like the movie's called joker fully ado right um the movie's also we saw it on 70 millimeter the movie was shot digitally like it's it's a lot of like very like silly like it, it feels like oh look it's i'm like a serious it's a serious movie like it's a real movie but it's like a 200 million dollar joker sequel that's like yeah. really really corny 
Yeah, that's one of my. You know, I want to talk about this without. I want to talk about this without sounding like the most annoying person yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. But but this is one of my big kind of complaints about this, and also I guess now the first movie that I've like since mm-hmm. I've changed yeah. my opinions on it a little bit is that I can appreciate people who are like this movie like especially the first movie the second movie doesn't really have a whole lot to say but the first movie at least like is trying to say these things and i'm like Mm -hmm. i would appreciate that more but like i'm watching a fucking comic book movie like i'm sorry guys but it's like you know what i mean it's like i listen like i get it like men's mental health is a problem you know i've been there before (laughs) but it's like you don't you know like it's like i'm watching like it's like (laughs) <laughs> I, I I heard somebody say this on a uh, on the big picture um, that and they were like they were like listen like I have to know that this guy goes on to fight the Batman <laughs> like, yeah well it's like this like, is like not it's, it's just like you've super created a world ridiculous. that is like so hard to buy and into I, 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 won't, I, I guess it's kind of like a spoiler um there's a scene I'm not gonna I'll, I'll be like very generic but there's this there's a scene where there is a character and the character is really only in this movie like he could he could be named anything else but he is named like a specific name like because right. it's like a reference and then towards the end of the movie he gets um I'll say like injured in a way that like okay i know it's i feel like you can kind of spoil the scene but i don't i don't know if we did i just say but um it's like but but basically like there was was a scene and it it directly like fucking pans to his face um and he's becoming two-face um and it's like so like like fucking easter egg ass scene yeah and there's like little shit like that and there even is like it's just very like it's not technically a spoiler because he is like played like they say it's harvey dent like from no okay so yeah so harvey dent he's the Um, only reason he's harvey dent in the movie is for one scene where his fucking face burns (laughs) i will say one of the highlights for me is that he's played by harry lottie who who is is good it's good he's he's a good performance Um, He's he's a good actor yeah i mean he's but barely it's like in the movie so ridiculous like, I, it's like so ridiculous stuff um, um yeah that like that's the kind of thing that really makes it unserious for me and really makes it hard to buy into for me is that like i've just never like yeah. i don't know like i'm glad that this like works for people on a level uh like beyond just like a comic book movie but to me it's really hard to ever, ever like achieve that and it's not to say that like there hasn't been comic book movies where i'm like oh this has like some serious emotional depth you know i felt that way about logan when it came out where i was like this is like a real good it's like a real touching thing but it's like yeah but it's like joker it's just it's just really hard to like buy into what this has to say about the world because of like like any how it presents the world to me like i just don't i don't know and and even in this movie specifically to kind of like talk about some of the things that happen in this movie again we're we're yeah. keeping this mostly spoiler free and like kind of general just for the sake of it i we don't have to do that but i just you know uh yeah. I, I don't think it's a movie we have to spoil um like plot by plot wise but no, no, no. the movie the movie kind of like brings in a lot of uh movie sub genres that i otherwise kind of adore and Mm -hmm. and take them so much less seriously in like this environment like that's like the kind of thing that like completely pulls me out of the movies that like hard it's like it the two real big things here are that it is it is half prison movie you know like a like a Shawshank (laughs) Redemption type of thing yeah and and half courtroom drama and if you know me I love a courtroom drama. Like yeah. I could watch people talk in courtrooms for hours. Like that, it is, it, that, is that, that is like so great cinematically. Mm-hmm. And neither of those like sub genres is made like interesting at all by the it's characters really, or the world that we're the in. The courtroom drama stuff is really bad. Yeah. Like I really <laughs> did not like that. I really, really never, bad. there was never like not a single scene in the courtroom was engaging at all to me and then in the prison i feel pretty similarly is like the you know we could talk about it i mean lady yeah. gaga's in this movie and and so yeah. a lot of what happens and in lady the gaga is, is in this movie uh the as, romance as harley quinn um right. which is, she's just harley quinn just because she just, can yeah. be <laughs> it's like another one of those like, things where it's like the same thing as harvey dent where it's like 
she's just like playing a girl and then they threw on harvey like harley quinn's name because reference it's like she does like have clown makeup in the movie but it's like very like it's so loosely adapted that it's like okay right yeah but it's like but there's there's this like romantic aspect of the movie of course Mm -hmm. because of her and uh none of that stuff works either um Mm -hmm. i mean not doesn't even really what's yeah it never even really begins to be honest which is like another. i mean we talked about yes the the movie ended in and and you were like i thought we were like you know we had a other hour or something left yeah i was like because the thing is is like uh, and listen uh, part of it was like i was so tired that i was like half falling asleep during the movie so maybe that's why it went by fast but um but i stayed awake and and um and i said to owen and and george and sophie after uh the, (laughs) the movie just like it never starts like it's like mm-hmm. i listen i i'm maybe this is just like my perspective and people are gonna think i sound like a dumbass for this but it's like if you um you know uh when you get to the third act kind of the beginning of the third act there's uh there's an event that happens the the kind of uh it's yeah uh, the the romantic aspect of it there's a scene uh on the stairs that kind of marks the beginning of the third act and in my head when that happened i was like oh this is the beginning of the third act because i because my fucking screenwriter brain i'm like i know what that looks like and so like i know right away that we're in the third act and then i'm in my head talking to myself like how did we get here because the movie hasn't really done anything yet like there's no the prison stuff is such a fucking drag the romance never really gets established beyond the fact that it has to be established because these two have to kind of like carry this movie together uh and then the courtroom stuff is is like fucking miserable like it's like it's it's like unwatchable almost um so i don't you know like it's like i at least the prison stuff had like moments where i was like oh they might well the prison stuff has brennan gleason who's yes exactly which like him being in the movie is like totally confusing to me as well because i'm like (laughs) Could he please go do anything out? Like, it's like, I felt bad. I was like, there's no way you pulled. There's no way you yeah. you massacred my boy like this. Like, like put, put him in a different movie, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. I was like, how many movies have come out between this and Banshees of Inner None. <laughs> he has not been in yeah. a movie. But it's, uh, it's like, we, like, like what you said. I'm just like trying to think about scenes in the movie. And the movie is like 140 minutes long. And it's like, not a lot happens. It's like a lot of like forgettable shit that goes on, which I even though like I'm not not that like the original movie was like a masterpiece or I even care much about it. But there's stuff happens in that movie stuff. Yeah. Whatever you say about Joker, the first movie that stuff happens in that movie. Right. Yeah. Consistent. There are like yeah. a bunch. Yeah. You know, like shit happens in that movie. Um Dude, I'm going to be honest with you. This is like depressing. I'm looking at Brendan Gleeson's filmography. <laughs> We're talking about. He's a so good. He's so career fantastic. performance in Banshees of Inish Erin. One of the, one of the best performances of his career. Yeah. He, this is the first time he's back in a movie since then. Yeah. To be like the the prison guard in Joker Folia do and, and he doesn't he's like it's not even consequential to anything going on. Like the prison yeah. stuff is so pointless almost that I'm like shocked that this is how he follows up what is one of my favorite movies of the past few years. Um, I mean, maybe the bag was good. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, the... Maybe he can go retire. When you're a Brendan Gleeson kind of actor, you have to do these things because he's not really leading movies, you know? He has to he has yeah. to feed his family. He, but, he um, should. That'd be fun. Sure. I mean, I like I've I've long thought that he has the talent for i mean he's amazing he's he's fantastic like uh, there's no i don't think anybody's doubting that but it's like why are you even here dude like it's like it just makes me feel bad like it's like i'm watching the movie and at first i was like is that did they get a brendan gleason look-alike for oh you didn't know he was in guard no i didn't know he was in it going into it i was like there's no way that's brendan gleason right and then there was a moment where i saw his face a second time and i was like oh that's just some guy that really looks like brendan gleason and then he shows up again and i'm like oh it's literally brendan gleason and i was like what the fuck (laughs) and um what's it called uh catherine keener's in this movie who yeah voices she's got a great great voice yeah and she's like you know she's she's 
it, and then she's not in it. And then it's <laughs> right, it's, but this isn't the first time she's like kind of. No, I know, I know. I'm just talking about random bad movies, but, movie. um, but she is. She does know how to pick them, though. She's in a lot of great projects as well. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like the cast is just. Uh, I don't know. Steve Coogan shows up for one point. That was interesting, I guess. Um, Ken a... Lung, who's also in industry, both him and Harry Lottie are Ken in Lung has the like industry one boys are winning scene. right now. Is he, yeah, in, the, he he's just not like, in the first movie? I, why is he in his movie? <laughs> I, I don't know. He just shows he it's like, like, archive, he's, like yeah, it's like he's like a doctor just like talking for one scene. It's so random because speaking of like tremendous actor. Yeah. Um, I, I saw when I mean, he shows up, I'm like, oh, I, I love him. He's so fantastic. And he's just kind of yeah. in here to be like a witness um, in the in the courtroom. Right. Um, um, I mean, yeah, it's like I, kind of one of those things where it's like you have $200 million. You can bring this guy in for one scene. Um, silly. It's did like you so. see, though, that Francis Ford Coppola liked the movie? I did. I did. <laughs> um, and I forget. Who was the other? I think it was Spielberg. I think they were some. There was some tweet about like Steven Spielberg and Francis Ford Coppola have like the most dog shit contemporary film taste. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like it's very funny. Like um, there are contemporary filmmakers or, or even older filmmakers who have a good good modern taste. Uh, but maybe it was Martin Scorsese who they're talking about. But it was like they, it was like Francis and some other person. They were like. He's like Scorsese guys. has pretty decent modern taste. I don't know. Okay. Sometimes he might. I, be I forget what the the, the exact but... was, but um, it was it was pretty funny. I'm just kind of, I can't imagining um, and, and I and fucking Francis Ford Coppola watching that movie. Right. Uh, he, he was like, I love Todd Phillips. I love Hangover Three. Or so he said something like stupid like that. Yeah, he did. That was part of the quote. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's very silly. Uh the i guess kind of like final thing i want to mention about the movie is like like a a a thing outside of the movie is todd phillips kind of uh going out and being like yeah i'm i'm done with the d with dc after this movie like i don't really somebody kind of asked him about the idea of a harley quinn led movie and he was like this is he was like, I think these two are just it for me. Like, um, this is all I really want to contribute. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like the I never really expected there to be a the Joker sequel, and I, I don't, yeah, think, you know, he's not good. Um, I think it's an interesting like, where do you go from here in terms of your, like, because right. you were the Hangover guy, and now and then you... you made two Joker movies that were like super self serious, and then like the second one like hated the first one, and like the second one was also like the, one of the biggest flops in recent yeah. memory um uh, is this like a I situation where the movie is almost received so poorly that whatever he does next people are just not going to give a fuck about well i don't think if he, it's kind of like the it's probably like it's bigger than that it's probably he's you know not saying he's john watts but it is kind of like one of those things where it's like people like hangover right and that was like a but it came like it became the kind of like a little franchise and then joker is like an ip and then it's like, but are people going to see Todd Phillips movies for Todd Phillips, right? At this point, yeah, At, no. It's like he's so he's big in the pop culture because he directed the Joker movie, yeah. And the but I just I I meant more so that I just like I kind of wonder mm-hmm. if the next step for him is doing something smaller because Joker yeah. two is such a fuck you. Well, it's like is he is he essentially making this movie and saying that like he doesn't. Want, I think, want to make another movie like this or is he just going to go like jump into another big studio project i i forget who said it um but it's kind of just like a conversation piece of um not everyone can do that not everyone can go down you know and right. it's like kind of those things like, once you hit an x amount of dollars you're never some people just can't go back someone yeah. who can and there's a lot of people who can but like i think like david gordon green who's able to work in like different spaces and like he did the halloween movies and now he's doing like a smaller indie movie and like he's able to like bounce around and there's a lot of guys who can do that um not everyone can and like if a guy who's like they get a hundred million dollar movie it does bad and they're like i don't want to go back and do an indie movie and then they never make another movie again um yeah. that's a thing for todd phillips to do i think it's also interesting to talk about um walking phoenix at this point who just is like not um in the best space in terms of like yeah. the public eye right now in terms of um dropping out of the todd haynes movie and now you know this movie just 
being flopping costly coming off of like a movie where like when he played the same character he won a won fucking oscar. oscar for it yeah so really um, and this will not be nominated for, for an oscar a really weird right. spot for him in his career as like i mean i'm sure like he's going to get work but it's like he you know he's he's definitely looked at differently than he was he's got some yeah he, he's got to like really do something to get in people's good graces again because it's like yeah. audiences might not respond to him now and directors might not want to work with him now that's well, yeah, well, i mean more public Todd Haynes, it's like the biggest thing like, todd haynes is getting old he's he's only got x amount of movies left in him and he spent all this time on this movie and and walking really doing that is is really messed up and i think all people aren't going to be too not just happy. that but a lot of people in hollywood really like todd haynes oh yeah oh yeah he's, oh, yeah. he's a he's a well-liked director in hollywood there are not like yeah. they're not like you know like the, the sentiment in hollywood about todd haynes is like so overwhelmingly positive like it's like that's not really a, a guy that you just like yeah and even from an it's... artist perspective it just feels weird for that to be a guy whose project you drop out of i mean it's yep. like I, who would not want to make a movie with todd haynes you know so it's like uh, especially from an actor's perspective, because like regardless of the quality of his movies, he does make real actor movies, you know, movies where actors are like often nominated for awards, yeah. like kind of like these big showy projects where like you really get to do a lot mm -hmm. with them. So it is a little bit surprising. And I and I wonder if uh, Joaquin's going to have a bit of trouble for the next yeah, couple of years really, here. Well, trying also, to get in, like, I'm interested. Project. I don't know if we'll ever know it, but um, I'm interested if 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 Todd and and Joaquin have a good relationship at this point, because even with this film, like, are they are they sticking by it, or or as this as this film kind of, you know, right? Joaquin Phoenix leads the Todd the Todd. Well, I'm, I'm um, thinking the the Phillips Todd Phillips, project. Yeah, like I'm like, <laughs> is are they like going to get the Buddha to be like they're the only they have each other, or or are they separated too? Is this a are they on their own? What is what is the the future for these two guys? Yeah, you, you no, these are important it. questions. What about Gaga, who like kind of, uh, you know? I think if anyone, I think if anyone is born escapes, and then doesn't get to do a lot here, yeah, I think if anyone escapes freely from this movie, it is Gaga. I think yeah, it's she doesn't really do anything to like literally. make her reputation worse. Yeah, I she mean, doesn't really even get to do that all album all. that people aren't loving. Um, like yeah. that's like with the movie. Um, I think she could immediately like go into another role and be really great. Um, and yeah. and then like everyone's gonna talk about her like she's amazing again. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is like the last big role for her. But I don't. I just I don't think so because you talk about House of Gucci and and stuff like that. Like that movie wasn't received very well. And obviously this is like a bigger right. thing. This is a bigger deal. Um, but I think she will to be fine um yeah i feel like when you talk about like who's uh whose face is on the the fucking failure it's it's walking in and and todd phillips yeah no that makes sense um okay i mean that's joker folio do uh oh we actually you know we didn't talk about the ending which we yeah. maybe want to mention a little bit uh like quick like spoiler warning we'll just we'll just mention it and see if yeah. we have any thoughts about it but uh so, so don't listen to this part if you don't want the ending spoiled uh Joker dies. <laughs> he gets uh yeah. he gets stabbed uh mm -hmm. in prison uh multiple times and mm -hmm. is dead. And that, you know, we talked about this being a fuck you movie. That is the ultimate like fuck you. Like you can't really understand it as a fuck you movie without knowing that that's how the movie ends. Obviously, that is what we mean when we say it's a fuck you movie kind of. Um yeah. It's also like the problem is that people kind of talked about the ending before we saw it as yeah, this like insanely yeah it was leaked online and people were like wow that's insane and it's like uh, is it is it really you know yeah, what i mean it's like uh, i wouldn't have been like, surprised uh, if he yeah. died in the first movie you know it's like yeah. this is just like i'm I, the world that they've created i'm like it, it, it seems like that's really the natural path for him to go down i mean how long was he gonna be able yeah. to do him getting else, stabbed right? at the end makes sense but i think it's kind of almost undermined it undermines itself by the super corny like Heath Ledger Joker like cut his mouth open thing that it does right. it's like a very like it's the same thing as like the Harvey Dent situation where it's like fucking like reference porn but like in this in this, like the super serious movie like super self-serious movie where like he's like this is 
Well, I so the the kind of like leaked thing was like that this like inmate kills the Joker, and I was under the impression that it was a different inmate until that scene happened. I was thinking it was the other because there's like another inmate that's like kind of crazy and that's like right. more but but you have this inmate that was like just like staring at him in the background for like ominously for like a bunch of scenes right. it's like yeah. it's like really silly um like super like foreshadowing it and then you have this like other inmate that like kind of is more like of a fan of um of arthur fleck and kind of following him around yeah um and i thought like and he's more like hyper and like kind of jokery um and then the other guy is kind of just like in the fucking background staring at him and then he like basically like, stabs arthur fleck and he does like he like kind of just like stands there and like fucking like weirdly like smiles and then he like it's like in the fucking blur he's like giving himself a, a little smile there as he's like fucking cackling um it's really stupid it's a yeah. really dumb I don't know. I, I I do like it's kind of like, yeah. It is it is the fuck you ending, but it's also like the fuck you ending would have just been like to stab him, he dies, and then like that's it, right? But like the fact that you have to add like the stupid like fucking Heath Ledger thing is so ridiculous. It's so stupid. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't have much to say about it because in yeah, my head I I'm mean... just like it's. Uh whatever I, I, before i even got to that point i was i had already kind of given up on the movie mm -hmm. you know so um it'd be crazy no you want to finish really fuck you ending <laughs> or if like he got stabbed like 20 minutes in the movie and then it became lady gaga just singing <laughs> lady gaga just singing musicals. well that's you know that's what i um like i almost thought that when they say that the ending is going to be crazy i was like what if they make this a gaga movie like what if it's actually yeah. her and then he dies and then like it flips you know and that well it's make... like he dies like it's like fucking like psycho like he dies like 30 minutes in the movie and then like the rest of him is just like dream sequencing and it's like gaga yeah. <laughs> and she's just fucking. i just i thought it was going to be know. significantly dumber than it was and ultimately it's just like annoying yeah. a little bit but it's like uh, it's yeah whatever. i think it, it it kind of from the kind of internet perspective of it it was like the fact that like joker dying in the movie leaked is like kind of like yeah. that was the more the shock but it, it the fact that it happened in the movie like when you see it in the movie it's like oh that's fucking stupid, i will it's like not that big of a deal i will wrap up by giving a shout to uh the person who i told you about after our screening which is that uh i was yeah. sitting in the theater so I, I was not sitting next to owen and and everybody else i was i i got my ticket late so i sat in the uh at the end of a row by myself and this person sitting next to me was super into the movie they were like uh, uh most likely a big fan of the first Joker or probably just like a fan of the like Joker as a character and all of the comic book stuff based on how engaged they were. Um, and maybe this person had like seen that rumor online and didn't believe it, you know, um, so they're watching the movie. They're like, they're like laughing at parts. They're like sitting up in their seat. They're locked in, like relaxing, eating their popcorn, like having a good time. Um, and then, the guy comes and, and stabs Joker. And as soon as he does it, the guy, the guy's leaned back in his seat next to me, eating his popcorn. He sees him get stabbed and he goes, Oh no. And stands up and grabs his stuff, like <laughs> throws his, like throws his thing in his bag and just runs it past me out of the theater and leaves right away and never comes back. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way. It's like, like the I, fucking those like I, I memes a very special where it's like that the fucking sad part of the movies that happens and they just close their computer and that's yeah. the ending. I was they, like, yeah. I was like shocked because it's like, you know, we we um we kind of like poke fun at like some of these people who are like super into these movies and stuff, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, whatever. If you like Joker, you like Joker, but it's like you never really like realize it until you like kind of experience one of these people it's kind of like with um <laughs> not to make this too political but you remember like we kind of i don't know if we talked about this on the podcast this is probably an off podcast conversation but kind of those like over the top trump supporters like the like the kind of people who are just like so like yeah like weirdly passionate about him and it's like you 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 <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, almost, like, like it's almost so like, ridiculous like they, that you yeah it's like so ridiculous that, like you can't believe this and then you see one of them in person and you're like yeah. oh people are actually like this <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that's kind of how yeah. i felt watching that guy see joe or die and like run out of the theater i was like oh people like 
it's not just like it's not just like yeah, oh people like joker it's like oh people really related to joker like yeah. really like saw the movie and were like oh this is this is and, like yeah it. like and then this this joker 2 is almost like very sacrilegious to people who yeah. like treat joker and like put him on like a pedestal of like oh like he, that's me like it's like <laughs> it's like if they made like an american psycho fucking sequel and then like he was doing like dancing and like then they fucking stab him at the end or something i don't know right. it's like if they like I, but it's like a total like misinterpretation of like the first movie in terms of like the idolization and then the second movie is like no he's actually like don't idolize him but it's again we talked about it, it's like still a bad movie um but it definitely rubbed a lot of people the wrong way um and the in the treatment of of the joker one thing i actually want to talk about um i just remembered um, what did you think about the little like little cartoon at the beginning of the movie? <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered. Um, yeah, that was like a it was like a it was fun cute. little thing. I I like, I, would, like, I, I was, was like, like, oh, maybe Todd Phillips is kind of like having a bit of fun with this, and then yeah, the rest of the movie. I because it's the I, whole I the cartoon. So um, the the kind of thing is like Joker's shadow and and Joker's shadow taking over, and it's kind of with the the separation of Arthur Fleck and Joker, and that's kind of what the movie's about. It's like those two people, uh, kind of being separate and and arthur fleck not wanting to be joker anymore and not him that's not really him you know um and i thought it was interesting i wish it would honestly the big fuck you thing and if they wanted like if uh todd phillips really wanted to go over the top with it he would have done like fucking who framed roger rabbit like there would be like animated fucking characters going on and it would have been like totally ridiculous and like super crazy because i think the animation part was cool um i think it would be it would be a better movie if they worked that more into the film and it was like a part of the actual film and rather than it just being like a little opening thing because it was like an opening thing made by separate people that was just like at the beginning of the movie rather than like a part of the the the, the kind of film as a whole yeah um yeah i was like okay it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a little cute. You know, it's a little cute thing. The rest of the it's probably my happened, favorite part of the movie. Kind of forget about it's, it. It's yeah. probably my yeah. It's like it's I don't like, know that I have a favorite part. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. We'll talk about some news. We don't have a ton. Uh. But reminders, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe, and rate the episode on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, uh, and follow us at all the links. You know, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you can join the Discord um and and you can come back next week for the episode the megalopolis episode that you uh of course were promised <laughs> don't worry it's not going anywhere we have plenty to say uh but big piece of news that kind of ties into the joker stuff a little bit which is why i wanted to uh start with this piece of news and 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 really the the only like kind of meaty piece of news here that i think warrants a conversation uh studios are assembling super fan focus groups to assess various materials for a franchise project to avoid social media backlash they the quote is they'll just tell us if you do that fans are going to retaliate if it's early enough and the movie isn't finished yet we can make those kinds of changes um it's an interesting conversation to have in yeah, conjunction actually, with the Joker thing, because of the f- kind of fan backlash to it, and it's like, yeah. is there a world in which, if they tested a focus group early and they were like, oh, the ending is going to be the Joker getting killed, and then they just like force Todd Phillips to remake the movie? You know, it's like yeah. this. This uh, the the idea of it is just like as much as I would prefer Joker two to be a better movie. The idea of testing a focus group to to change the movie is like infinitely worse um, than yeah. than the movie we have. Um, um, it's it's really silly. I think um, this isn't like a thing that just like started yesterday, right? Like this is. Sure. Um, I mean, focus. We've been group kind of that... work. No, I mean, but we've kind of been working up to this for a while, and obviously, like these big companies, like. <clears throat> even you think about dc in general um a lot of what's been going on with dc in the past decade has been them listening very closely to kind of what people t- are talking about online like like a lot of the, those like the the Steiner projects made money right but they kind of shifted gears of because of what the fans were saying right 
Um, and it's that is like a very negative precedent and and it's scary for like the future of like these big movies. Um, and at the end of the day, it's it's getting more and more like, yeah, these movies are just like these are just content. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna have people who are just like giving people what they want, and that's not really um, you know, what this is all yeah, about. It's, it's, it's like. like... <sighs> It's so I just can't imagine like going into stuff with that perspective, which is like mm -hmm. you want st like like as a fan, you almost like you need things to go your way. You know, it's like, yeah, we're talking about art. Like, it's like I, go play Dungeons and Dragons or something, dude. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. if you care so much well, about like making your own story, it's, like it's like. like reading the like the twitter comments and like the blue checks and stuff a even lot the of blue checks were upset even the no, blue I, checks I were like this I is the see... death of creativity yeah no i like... see, did see some of those but there were some there's comments in it a lot of it like a lot of the people agreeing with it or that like it comes from like a place of like i'm paying money to see this right like yeah it's a lot of like i own this like this is like i it's a lot of weird like backwards like the, the only reason you get to make movies is because i pay to go see it so i'm paying to go see like something i you should be like the way i want it which is like a really like weird like warped perspective of like and just it, an these, awful relationship to have yeah the... it's but it's also it's like <laughs> to take it like a different angle it's like um you a lot of there's so much stuff where it's like you would have never known that you would like that if you didn't fucking like it's like someone's being creative and imagining things and and thinking of things that you would never think of and that's why it's interesting to watch it it's not you know it's like it's right. super like baby fucking mentality and it's 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 scary especially like even like um with the more recent stuff from disney where they're talking about like uh more sequels less like individual movies less original movies less inclusivity and then they were now we're gonna do focus groups and we're really like they're really scared and they're really focusing on like we gotta give them what they want and we gotta keep them happy and we can't take any risks and it's just getting worse and worse and worse um yeah it and... feels like it's kind of like the the snowball effect it is, like, it it's, is. it's the snowball effect of of multiple you have there's multiple films that you kind of point to as like making issues like this i think joker 2 is just the next one that kind of yeah it off the fans and so now we have to like fucking freak out but i think we talk about like again i mentioned like the snyder movies but also the the star wars sequels especially like the, yeah the star wars sequels is probably that's the big where one, this but, where this all really uh, the ryan johnson topic. star wars film um is the big one because that was like really big outrage and then they shifted and they shift and they keep and now star wars is in like yeah. the worst place it's ever been in and it's like i can't imagine any film director wanting to touch any big ip at this point because of the you know the mess that that it comes with um, yeah and it's interesting and when you think about that it's like it might just get to the point where it's like no interesting artist is, is working with big ip and and maybe that kind of will cause some change in terms of like you know because a lot of times we get you know it's like oh damn the uh, this x y and z is working on this new fucking slot movie right and and then the more fucking control that focus groups have i think the, the less, less people interesting are people are going to, to want to do it yeah i mean it like checks a check and you're gonna have people in whatever yeah. But I think the like the, the control now isn't even that great. But if it's going to get worse, because um, the thing is, it's like you know. it's just, you know, I I understand the kind of like do one for them, like you got to make money type of thing. But at some point when when you like push these yeah. artists too far, it's it's going to feel like soul crushing to them. Like it's like you're doing mm -hmm. soulless work. But I think it already is like, for many people. Yeah, for most of them. Yeah. But then it's like if you know like it's like how much worse is it going to get before they're just like okay i'd rather i'd rather i'd i'd quite literally rather just get paid dog shit to enjoy myself than than sit around and like do awful work 
and have yeah. this attack because there's like an element of like you know i it's not that like everybody thinks about this but like as an artist it's like it's also like an element of like this is like your impact and it's like this is like your life and your time and it's like how many how how much do you want to be associated with this like awful shit like movie that you have no control over after like you've been a devoted artist for decades and it's like and maybe you will be for decades after and then when you and when you die the one thing people will remember you for is some stupid fucking sequel that like studios had complete control it's like you know that's not not everybody's in that headspace but like you have to kind of like consider those things because as an artist like this is what you're like you only have so much time to make the art that you want to make like it's like who you know obviously you need money to make that art you need money to like have a life and, and a family and whatever but it's like at what point is this shit just like just like too fucking much dude like it's like what are we yeah. doing to to people if this is you know and it sounds like obviously like it sounds so privileged to be like some uh, some of these people doing like studio movies are already like super successful and like making millions of dollars blah 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 but it's like you know like this stuff still matters <laughs> like it's like from from an artist yeah. perspective like this is the only thing you think about you know like it's like you're not like uh, thinking about a lot, maybe some of them are but a lot of these people are not thinking about that stuff like it's like you want to make art like it's like you're not yeah nobody it's a, nobody ever a, like goes down the that trajectory to be like, yeah <laughs> like it's i don't know it's uh it's 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 gloomy for sure yeah um i also i'm interested in like um you know when they care so much about um i guess it, it doesn't matter in terms of like i guess the majority is but maybe like what if the majority just comes down and like dude this shit's fucking like these focus groups are fucking stupid it's like do they then like because it's like they're so it's these these companies are so reactionary and so like money focused that they're it's it's tough because they just have to like a, a, when you're so big like this and you are working on stuff like this you gotta have to pick a, a lane and, and and ride by that you know it's like in, but they kind of they're so they're they're curving and they're they're they're, they're going back and forth and back and forth they're not ever getting anywhere because they keep fucking going back and around and and they're they're trying to please so many people and ultimately not really pleasing many people um, or just yeah. they're pleasing like the worst people you know that's what it's right. like they're pleasing the worst fucking groups um which is it's uh, fucking annoying yeah um anyway that's like the big piece of news i guess there's not a ton we could talk about uh, a few of these little things uh in biopic news, we're getting a James Dean biopic, apparently. Um, certainly one of the ones that oh. I feel like doesn't need to exist because it's just a hard... There already uh, was a James Dean movie with um, with James Franco. I mean, yeah. It's a TV movie. <laughs> I think maybe, but but it's like, why again? Uh, yeah. And not just again, but like, why at all? In the first, I don't know. It's just like... Do you remember... The like CGI James Dean thing, where like they brought him back. <laughs> oh, what was that for? I don't remember. I feel like I do remember seeing it. I remember people talking about it. It's like well, that CGI was like a thing James... that they were gonna do for a movie, like right? And then they never made it. Maybe. Is that what it was? It was like I feel like James I feel like Dean they wanted to like movie. CGI him for some movie, and then they never made that movie. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> yeah it yeah. seems like it was a it was a vietnam movie that was in 2019 was first speculated and we've never gotten it so maybe it just never has happened. for the best probably but yeah probably for the best the problem with like a james dean biopic is it's so hard to cast because he was so young when he died that it's like who even yeah fits i think that mold? Like, how the do you young the right franco person? kind of was a really like good casting i think like if you look at what he looks like in the, that movie it, it really works but it is like he, yeah, has he does like, look good yeah he has such an iconic look um that it i don't know it's it's also like it's silly to say, i don't know we're so biopic fucking pilled um, yeah it's so annoying i kind of until you until you mentioned it i kind of completely forgot about that franco one but it's a, um, i mean it's a tv movie yeah, but it's still like yeah, weird to even do it again as like uh, I don't it's just it's just dumb. I don't, you know, whatever. Um it's it's just like 
uh, X, Y, Z things that we've said about biopics in the news before is it all applies all over again. You know, it's I mean, uh, James Dean's IP. It's James bio, Dean's IP. It's a biopic heavy culture. Uh, more exciting news that's also paired with like, uh, you know, uh, let's just put them both together. So uh, Sam Raimi news, uh, which you and I kind of talked about yesterday. Uh, Rachel McAdams is in talks to star in Sam Raimi's new horror thriller movie send help described as a mix between misery and castaway uh, but then in addition yeah. in addition there's a rumor that sam raimi will be returning to direct dr strange, dr. strange 3, 3. Um, here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing if they can if he makes this horror movie i don't care fucking right three, yeah they because that was the thing when when um when he made um when he did dr strange 2 was like I didn't even know he was ever going to make another movie. And then it's like, okay, is this a one for them, one for me thing? Like, please, can we do another, like, just another Sam Raimi movie? Um, and then that was like, I don't know, he's producing movies now. He's he's being more producer in the past, you know, uh, 10 years or whatever. Um, and then we get news of this. And then the news is like, he wants to do this horror movie. He has an idea. It's not technically greenlit. It's not. And then the Rachel McAdams thing really makes it sound like, oh, this movie's going to happen. This is a real movie. Right. Like this movie's happening, which is huge because I think um, that's awesome. I really love Sam Raimi. I think he's a terrific director, and I think he's a really great horror director. And I, I think, you know, you talk about, like, control and in, in, in kind of the focus groups and stuff. It's like the, the, his Doctor Strange movie is not really a thing. It's like he, those Sam Raimi-isms in it, and he's doing what he can, but it's not really his movie. A smaller budget horror movie starring Rachel McAdams, he's going to have as much control as you really can have in that situation, which sounds awesome. It sounds really great. Um, if he has Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange three, it's like well, you know, whatever. Um, I'd rather him do Doctor Strange three than fucking like the Avengers movie because I think that would take a lot more of his time. Yeah. If he was going to do a superhero movie, I'd love um for him to do it the a Batman movie. I think he's kind of perfect for it, but but you know whatever um yeah. but yeah that that uh horror movie sounds amazing they, they, they said um, it was i think it said it was gonna start shooting in january yeah i'm i'm interested for sure not as much for dr strange 3 obviously yeah but, i mean but like drag me to hell uh, is really good yeah uh, obviously the evil dead movies he's, he's a really fantastic horror director yeah which is uh, it's funny and it's like I, I mean i guess he hasn't he could just not want to do it but i think in terms of like we talk about the going back to a smaller budget thing, he could really kill it. And just if he's making like like twenty million dollar, ten million dollar horror movies every two years, like he could just devour that shit because he's it. He's a talent for sure that you know yeah. we only have right now. Our last piece of news. I don't know how much you care about this because I don't even know if you're really as big a fan of him as like the average person. Uh, but Daniel Day Lewis is officially returning to acting with a starring role in his son Ronan Day Lewis's directorial debut. Yeah, that was the thing. Uh, the <laughs> film the will explore label. the intricate relationships between fathers, sons, and brothers, and the dynamics of familial bonds. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I like listen. If it's super silly, no, it's like. But the thing is, it's like if you're like done acting, and you're gonna come back, and it's like it's nice to do a nice thing for yourself. Oh no, like, I, you know, I, like, I, I don't. Like, he, people are I like, he's also he's a, he's a writer on the project. He he really worked with his son there. It's a collaborative yeah. kind of piece. It's yeah. I it's I think it is funny though the way that it was framed. Um, he also it's like he's not a guy that's working every two years. Like he's only been yeah. retired for like seven years. It's not like, yeah, he... the thing he's kind of like <laughs> a fake, like retired guy, but yeah. like, but the thing is, is that like, even when he was a working actor, he kind of almost felt like a retired actor because yeah. he only put, you know, obviously like in his prime, he was starring in sure. a ton of stuff, but it's like over the last, however many like between like there will be blood coming out in 2007 and and, and like Lincoln. today he's only been in Lincoln like come out. he's only been in like five movies uh lincoln was 2012 yeah. he was in uh rob marshall's nine in 2009 wait like um, the fucking like bag go guy movie what 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 guy movie <laughs> like nine like the little 
little guys? Uh, I don't know what you're referring to. Oh, oh. but like Elijah Wood. <laughs> oh, I know it's not. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, I don't think we're thinking of the same movie. Nine. Um, And then he does Lincoln and then and then he does Phantom Thread. And and then that brings us to now. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. that's very few movies over the past whatever yeah i would have just assumed he would have ended up being in a in a paul thomas anderson movie yeah (laughs) like even if you want to make it 22 years and date it back to gangs of new york that's still not that many movies it's like six movies in the past 22 years like it's like the guy that's what i'm saying like it's like um, he wasn't even And in general he's never really been in that many movies he's mostly been a like considered one of the great actors for quality and not quantity Mm -hmm. um but but yeah so every time they kind of post the like coming out of retirement thing it's just like that's just every time he acts like you never really know if it's gonna be his last movie because but it's like it's never not exciting like it's like obviously i'll watch him in anything like he's i yeah yeah, and this is overall like not as exciting as if it was like he's in the next martin scorsese movie or something yeah of course Uh, but maybe it's i don't know you maybe we'll see maybe it's yeah maybe his son's talented maybe not i don't like you know it's like who cares i don't it's like he's one of those people where it's like um you know there's there's a lot of like talk of like overrated underrated things when it comes to movies or athletes or whatever like he's one of those people where it's just like uh it's just as good as you say it is you know it's like it, there's not like any like other way to approach it it's like kind of like when people talk about like the godfather and citizen kane and stuff where it's like i want to like give you a hot take the truth is it's mm-hmm. just like everybody loves it and it actually just is that good it's like everybody says daniel day lewis is one of the best actors and then you see him act and you're like yeah they were right like it's like there's not like obviously you'll be excited to watch him in anything i don't know like he's he's great but this is not it's cool, you know. I don't know. Maybe it'll be his last, his actual last movie, which like that. That's just, that's a reason to look out for it, I guess. Um, but, but that's a piece of news. Um, we could end there, wrap it up, and next week we will talk about <laughs> Megalopolis and the New York Film Festival, assuming that that episode doesn't get pushed back. <laughs> um, no, we will. We will talk about Megalopolis. We'll talk about New York Film Festival, and we'll see you later. Bye.